Thank you very much. So is this cool or what? You get to get out of school and come here to this bookstore, which has been on Saturday Night Live, this bookstore has, and in Doonesbury cartoons, and the president came to this bookstore. So this is a very special place to get to come, and it's very special for me to be here, uh, too. Uh, so I'm very pleased. Um, but I'm also especially pleased to be able to talk to you about these great women. Because when I was a kid growing up, and, um, and even well into my uh, time as an adult, I would look at, at all these uh, stories from history and all these pictures and paintings and all that, statues, and there were no women. And I started to think maybe there weren't any women then. What do you think? You, <laughs> you think there were any women around the time of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and all that? You do? You think there were actual women? Well, probably. Um, I, I, you know, I did start to think about it and thought, well, yes, you know, Adam and Eve, there were women then. Um, although my favorite bumper sticker is Eve was framed. But um, so, of course, living here and growing up here, I did go to Mount Vernon all the time. Uh, so I did know that there was somebody named Martha Washington, uh, but that was about it. Do you all know anything about Martha Washington? Does anybody? Yeah, go ahead. She was married to George Washington, but did she do anything herself? Does anybody know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, she helped, she um, cheered up the um, soldiers at Valley Forge. She's cheered up the soldiers at Valley Forge. That's exactly what I knew about Martha Washington, was that she spent a winter at Valley Forge with the soldiers. But you know what? The Revolutionary War was eight years long, and she spent every winter with the soldiers. And she hated it. She hated having to go because partly it was it was unpleasant, it was cold, it was there was not food, there was it was uh, difficult. Uh, also the roads were very uh, treacherous and she had to go over them and and the British took people like Martha Washington, who was the wife of the chief patriot, George Washington, they took women like her hostage and put them in prison, and some of them were killed. So it was scary for her to go, but she went every winter of the war because George Washington wanted her to, because she did cheer up the troops so much that she really helped keep them uh, in camp and keep them from deserting the army at times when they had no food and no shelter and no uh, pay. And here she is at Valley Forge with the soldiers. But um, she would come, the soldiers loved her. She would come from Mount Vernon where over the summer, the enslaved people there had made uh, preserves and made and uh, cured meats and woven cloth. And so she would arrive with a carriage full of stuff. And they would, the soldiers would cheer, Lady Washington is here. And that was just one of the many contributions that African Americans made to the revolution was uh, what Martha Washington was able to contribute to the soldiers. But there was another really important thing she did that I never knew about until I was learning about these women. And that is that um, smallpox was a terrible disease. And what used to happen is more people were killed in wars by disease than by weapons. And um, the Americans were in danger of all being wiped out by smallpox. So, the, so George Washington, the general, wanted the soldiers to all take the smallpox inoculation. Well, in those days, that was a really dangerous thing to do. If you took it and lived, you were unlikely to get smallpox, but you might die from the inoculation itself. So people were very nervous about taking it. And much to George Washington's surprise, Martha Washington went and had the smallpox inoculation. And so he was able to say to the troops, well, look, the girl did it. And, uh, and then they, uh, they then followed suit. And they had far fewer cases of smallpox than the British Army did. So it was just one of the many things uh, that women did during the time period that was really uh, significant. And I kept learning things like this as I learned about these women. 
Uh, Benjamin Franklin's wife, for instance, I knew nothing about. Does anybody know anything about Benjamin Franklin's wife? See what I mean? Uh, there it is. Well, what do we know about Benjamin Franklin? I know you know about the kite and all of that, but what, what else do you know about him? Over here. Yeah. I don't know. He married someone and had a child. He married someone and had a child. Yeah. He signed the Declaration of Independence. He did sign the Declaration of Independence. He was actually one of the authors of it. Over here. He went to France. He went to France. Yeah. He opened up the first library. He opened the first free library. That's true. Go ahead. Fire department. <laughs> one more. Go ahead. He um he was a cartoonist. A cartoonist? Okay. <laughs> well, what I was hoping you might remember is that you usually learn in school that he was also the first postmaster general in the colonies and that he was in charge of the post office. But you know what? He wasn't here. He wasn't in the colonies. He was in England. And he was in England for years and years and years. And that left his wife, Deborah, to run the Postal Service. And she did a very good job of it. Uh, it was, of course, since we were still under the British at that point, uh, it was, uh, there was a British lord, Lord Loudon, in charge of it. And um, he, at one point, tried to fire one of Deborah's workers for the postal system, and she got furious. And she wrote to him and said, you can't fire my people. And by the way, you are slowing down the postal system and just get out of the way. And so here is a picture of Deborah Franklin telling off Lord Loudon, who is in her, in her palm of her hand. But she was a very astute businesswoman. And uh, she ran all of uh, what were hers and Ben Franklin's businesses which were essentially printing shops, which were like uh, franchises, a franchise is like McDonald's, right? There are lots of them. And uh, they went out to the front frontier, which was western Pennsylvania, and, she, and Ben was very grateful to her for being such a good businesswoman. He, he kept writing to her and saying, oh, you are a fortune to me, you do wonderful thing, work. And she kept saying, well, would you please come home from England? I mean, it's really... I'm lonely here, and I'd really like you to come home. And he wouldn't. Uh, and, then, um, and then some of their friends and neighbors thought that he was not um, really fighting hard enough against the Stamp Act. Does anybody know what the Stamp Act was? Yeah, well, let's see. Go ahead. The Stamp Act is when the British decided to tax the tea coming into the colonies. And well, tax, they were taxing, at that point, um, paper and other very essential things. And that was one of the reasons that, uh, that the Americans started to rebel against the British, was the Stamp Act. And, uh, and, and Ben Franklin was in England, and his uh, people in Pennsylvania thought, well, he should be fighting harder against that Stamp Act. And so they were so angry that they came and they were gonna, they were gonna tear down his house and everybody warned Deborah to get out of the way. And she said, I'm not going to do that. And she got a gun, and she got some friends with guns, and, um, and she defended her house. And, uh, and Ben wrote to her and said, well done, Deborah. Um, but he still wouldn't come home. And, uh, and their only daughter got married, and he wrote to her and said, make sure the wedding doesn't cost very much money, but he still wouldn't come home. And finally, she died. Deborah died, and Ben said, well, I have to come home now. I'll go home now, he wrote to a friend, because my wife, in whose hands I left the care of my affairs, has died. So now I will admit that when he got home, he did signed the Declaration of Independence. So I, I can't be all the time mad at him, but there are lots of reasons to be mad at him. Um, but um, he was there in Philadelphia while the men, and it was men, were assembling to decide what to do about the British because they were feeling more and more that the British were uh, making it hard to be under them, to be their colonists. And some of the men said, well, we can't fight the British. You know, they're our mother country. We just have to, we have to work with them. But meanwhile, the British had already had battles at 
Lexington and Concord, right? You remember those, the battles of Lexington and Concord? And those happened 